If we combine different fields of science, such as biology, chemistry, physics, and add to them the mind of an engineer, we will get in the result the major of biomedical engineering. My name is Abu Bakar M.B. Abdul Hamid, and in this video, we are going to talk about biomedical engineering, its history its various sub-disciplines and applications, and how it will shape our future. We can define biomedical engineering as applying electrical, chemical, optical, mechanical, and other engineering principles to understand modify or even control biological systems. However, another term as bioengineering or biological engineering is considered as a broader field of study which includes biomedical engineering within it. But, usually, bioengineering focuses on the application of engineering on biological processes, food, agriculture, and environmental processes and not necessarily medical applications. The era of biomedical devices and modern medical health systems was begin at the end of 19th century and the beginning of 20th century. In 1895, William Wondin discovered the X-ray and took the first X-ray image of his wife's hand and then he earned the first Nobel Prize in physics in 1901. Also, in 1895, William Enthoven invented the first practical electrocardiogram, ECG, and received the Nobel Prize in physiology or, let me say, in medicine in 1924. However, in 1919, Carl Erecki first coined the term biotechnology and later, in 1928, Alexander Fleming extracted penicillin, the first antibiotic from mold. Until the mid-century, many devices were invented like electric defibrator in 1933, first kidney dialysis machine in 1945, artificial hot bulb in 1951 and first first measure in 1952. During the 50s, the transistor and computer revolution occurred, paving the way to more and more complex and advanced devices, such as ultrasound in 1959, internal pacemaker in 1960, positron emission tomography in 1962, CT scan and MRI in 1972, and much more till our modern day. Since technology became necessary in most medical treatments, it was required to specify an educational program to study how to design, build, or fabricate devices or biomaterials to serve in different biomedical treatment, diagnosis, and other biomedical applications. Therefore, the first biomedical engineering departments were formed at the University of Virginia, Case Western Reserve University, and John Hoskin University. Biomedical engineering is a broad field. Presenting yourself only as a biomedical engineer would not help others to understand what you do, since medical treatment, diagnosis, or even biological experiments vary a lot depending on the variety of diseases or the biological research topic in general and knowledge in all other engineering fields could be needed in order to achieve the biomedical objectives. Therefore, biomedical engineering also will end up breaking down for many different disciplines based on the biological content and the engineering solution. Thus, for example, we combined mechanical engineering with biological subject or medical problems. We got biomechanics. In biomechanics, we study the science of movements of our bodies, how muscles, bones, tendons, and ligaments work together to produce movement. Also, 
which includes the study of microorganisms' movements, such as cancer cells' movements. All that to serve in the development of products that aid body motion for those who need help, example, prosthetics. Another application of biomechanics is the study of biofluid mechanics as blood flow and the forces acting on tissues in the artery, allowing to design better cardiovascular interventional devices. For example, artificial heart or artificial heart balls. Speaking of implanted devices, the materials of which they are made should be very carefully chosen, which leads us to the second subfield, that is biomaterials. Choosing the suitable materials is a key factor in any biomedical device. Biomaterials must be biocompatible, non-toxic, non-carcinogenic, chemically inert, stable and mechanically strong enough to withstand the repeated forces of a lifetime. Another very interesting topic about biomaterials is their use in drug delivery or as a contrast agent for medical imaging and therapy by fabricating micro and nano structured biomaterials that have the compatibility to target cancer cells for instance and release a drug or emit light the third subfield that we are going to talk about is biomedical devices or biomedical instrumentation. This subfield mainly focuses on combining electronics, biosensors, and signal processing to develop instruments used in the diagnosis and treatment of medical problems. This includes the design of all biomedical devices and equipment. It is important to notice that biomedical engineers are not expected to build or fabricate integrated circuits or biosensors. This is the job of electrical engineers, while biomedical engineers assemble all the different components to make biomedical instruments. Another subfield that is related to biomedical devices is medical imaging systems. It is considered as a subfield by itself due to its importance, since it is the only way to see through our bodies. There are many approaches for biomedical imaging based on different physics phenomena, starting from the visible light, IR, and UV light, to X-ray, ultrasound, nuclear imaging, and MRI. Each of these techniques has its own advantages based on the application. The fifth the subfield is biotechnology. It is defined as the use of organisms and organisms delivered materials for research and to produce diagnostic and therapeutic products that help to treat and prevent human diseases. For example, in engineering pharmaceutical products such as development of modified insulin. Another quick application which is considered one of the big topics and breakthroughs in biotechnology is gene editing tool crispr cas9 it is a tool for genome editing that introduces simplicity and efficiency when modifying a segment of dna biotechnology also includes creating tools that assist scientists and engineers to do their research and develop products in the field of biotechnology it ranges from techniques to visualize biological structures such as nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, X-ray diffraction, and cryo-electron microscopy, and analysis protocols like Western blot, PCR, and so on. And also we have bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is a combination of biology mathematics or statistics and computer science that focuses on acquisition, storage, analysis, and propagation of biological data that are mostly represented by DNA and amino acid sequences. Now, let's jump to our last subfield, which is physiological modeling. Physiological modeling is used to build mathematical models that are able to represent approximately the behavior of physiological systems or organs. When you have a mathematical models of a biological system, 
Firstly, you can have a comprehensive understanding of the living organisms. And number two, you can play with the different parameters and predict what would happen in abnormal conditions or diseases. A simple example of a physiological modern is blood flow in an artery. The flow rate depends on the different parameters such as blood pressure and resistance which is determined by wall thickness, cross-sectional area, viscosity and so on and so forth. All this can be represented by equations which would help in predicting what would happen in other scenarios such as blood clotting and arterial clerosis. This was a brief summary to most of biomedical engineering subdisciplines. In the end, a biomedical engineer will be a specialist in one or more of the previous subdisciplines, which will identify his knowledge and experiences either working in the research and scientific field or in the industry, maintaining the medical devices in the clinics and hospitals, providing training for the medical staff, or cell management. Biomedical engineering possesses a huge potential in shaping our future, considering our bodies and other creators as super machines. We are looking forward to the time when we will be able to engineer human-like organs and solve all of our body's flaws or maybe gain superpowers. For instance, if we were able to connect our brains into computers, we could open an enormous range of possibilities. We will be able to control things with our brains, having super memory, and in neurological disorders, and in neurodegenerative diseases will be something of the past. Several companies are working now on this project and one of them is Elon Musk companies, Neuralink. As he said, it will enable anyone who wants to have superhuman cognition. Surely, we can also overlook the risks that will result from this technology. However, another ongoing fast development field is artificial intelligence. Introducing artificial intelligence to biomedical devices makes this device smart. For example, instead of taking an X-ray image of a broken limb and showing it to a physician, the X-ray machine will directly know if there is a fracture or not. This could also apply for cancer detection or viruses like COVID-19 and many and many diseases. Physicians and doctors might be very expert on the skills, but they are still human and therefore they could make mistakes. And here comes the powerful addition of artificial intelligence to avoid diagnostic mistakes and save a lot of time and effort. Moreover, artificial intelligence could predict and diagnose diseases even in cases where doctors can't see any visible symptoms on patients such as a predicting skin cancer far earlier than what normal medicine can provide. And we can't talk about the future and forget to mention nanotechnology, of course. Thanks to nanotechnology, this big kidney dialysis machine could be replaced by this small artificial kidney. Most biological systems and materials are also nano-sized, and integrating nano-scaled parts to biomedical devices or biosensors or fabricating nano-structured biomaterials to deliver drugs or help in medical imaging can without doubt open new possibilities in diagnosing or treating incurable diseases. At the end, we don't know how fast biomedical engineering will evolve in the coming years and how far humanity can go, but we know that biomedical engineering holds a very, very crucial key to our future. Thank you for watching. This is Abu Bakar MB. We are a group of biomedical engineers. If you like this content, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like so we can create more and more content on biomedical engineering related topics. Thank you and see you next time.